if I wear a mask uh, and I'm going out uh, in public, that mask is going to do relatively little to protect me from exposure to all of the people who are around me. You know, most of the, the masks that you see people wearing on the street really aren't designed for the high level respiratory protection that we want to see our healthcare workers have as they're interacting with patients. But those masks uh, may be more helpful at preventing me from expelling droplets that might expose other people. We know that COVID-19 is a really serious and potentially lethal disease. And anything that we can do to prevent transmission uh, should be encouraged. Well, there are a lot of uh, different recommendations out there about face masks for a number of reasons. One is that there really isn't any conclusive data that they make a big difference. I think surgical face masks may have a little of impact, but the impact is hard to measure. There's a concept evolving in which masks really don't work well in the community as personal protective equipment. But if everybody wears them, they become community protective equipment. Uh, and that's something that we're really just starting to, uh, to wrestle with uh, in the United States. Yeah, there's recent research from, from China and Singapore, for instance, that has estimated that up to as many as about 50 or even 60 percent of transmissions of infection occur from people who are still asymptomatic. Uh, and that was one of the reasons, I think, why the Centers for Disease Control change their tune about masks. Wearing a mask sends that message of, yes, we're all, this is a pandemic situation, this is something to take seriously. But it could also send a message of, oh, well, I'm protected, so I'm going to go out and do my own thing and get on with life. I think, I mean, and that is, I think, the reason why policymakers have been quite reluctant to recommend mask wearing is that it might affect social distancing negatively. Yeah, another worry is that if you're using a face mask and you're getting the, the mask contaminated uh, from other people and you're not infected, that then when you handle the mask, if you're not careful, you could transfer, get the virus in your hands, and then if you forget and rub your eyes. So there needs to be an education campaign connected with use of face masks. Because there's a global shortage of masks, we should be reserving them for the healthcare workers. In that case, then cloth masks uh, might be the, the best option overall at the moment for general public. I get emails from colleagues who are very much concerned about homemade face masks because they're worried that they may not work and they may encourage people to take risks that they shouldn't be taking. So in 2008, we did a study that was published a few years later looking at homemade face masks. We wanted to know whether or not they actually worked at all. The surgical mask performed by far and away the best of all the materials that we tested. Um, and then we looked at sort of more common kind of cotton fabrics, t-shirt fabrics, and they had a sort of variable filtration efficiency between 50 and 70 percent. The addition of a mask might provide an additional benefit, but it's also going to have probably a marginal effect. There's increasing numbers of studies showing that it can be detected in the air in small micro droplets. And homemade masks and surgical masks are not going to do anything for you if that is the risk you face. It's very clear that once we start coming out of lockdown, we start having to go to work again, you will come across situations where you are going to be unable to have social distancing. Uh, if you don't have a mask on, then you're pretty naked as far as protection is concerned. But if you have that mask as well, then that's going to give you that added protection. I think it'll be interesting to see whether or not widespread face mask wearing will have an effect on the reduction of the incidence of the, of the virus. I think that remains to be seen at this stage.